One of the things I love about Furness Abbey is its rich red sandstone. It is growing old very gracefully. Weathered by centuries of wind, frost, rain and sun, it is crumbly and sandy to the touch. So one day in May, when I saw the abbey glowing beautifully red in the early evening sun, I had to stop. But then, something I've never seen from here before, cattle. Yes, of course the monks were farmers and kept granges and cattle and sheep. That was one of the reasons they came here. But I'm not usually reminded of this so close to the abbey precinct. Now, I've seen cattle before upstream by the mill beck, but never quite like this, up on a hill, above the abbey, overlooking the ruins, these sandstone walls hundreds of years old. But of course, these cattle are in one of the abbey quarries, a quarry now so well hidden by trees that we forget it's still there, a quarry which produced the very same warm red sunbathed sandstone I had stopped here today to admire. This quarry at Furness is an outcrop of one layer of the Triassic Sherwood Sandstone Group, also known locally as St Bees Sandstone, named after its most prominent outcrop at St Bees Head. The word Triassic means that it is more than 200 million years old. Barrow people have visited the natural amphitheatre at Furness Abbey for generations to roll eggs at Easter to sledge in winter, to attend occasional concerts and events. There used to be a football pitch here too. But in the trees at the foot of the hill, there lie hidden the remains of another quarry. There are more quarry faces hidden alongside the mill beck in the trees of Abbot's Wood, and some of these are inside the church site itself. Having all these quarries producing good quality stone within, forgive me, a stone throw of your chosen building site, is no accident. I believe this is why Furness Abbey is where it is today.